Okay, so this video is going to help you with section 7.4. We're going to start digging more into the trig identities and working more with uh, manipulating the trig identities um, to prove the identities and also to um, simplify trigonometric expressions. So, um, an identity is basically, you know what an, an identity is. It's when the left side of an equation is equal to the right side. So when we're actually, when we're proving identities, our whole goal is to take an equation and make the left side of the equation um, equal to the right side of the equation. We'll be doing that a little bit later. Okay, so these are the identities that we're actually going to be working with um, in this section. Hopefully these all look familiar to you. They're all on the left hand, upper left hand side of your identity sheet. Um, the quotient identities, which are... Um, Tangent theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. Cotangent is cosine over sine. And then hopefully you recognize the reciprocal identities of cosecant, secant, cotangent. Also the Pythagorean identities, which we've already been working with, these. And then the even odd identities. You'll have to start recognizing when you see the sine of a negative angle, you can take that negative and factor it out. That works for sine and cosecant. It also works for tangent and cotangent. But you'll notice that for cosine and for secant, when you take the cosine of a negative angle, that negative just goes, up, goes away. Same thing with secant. And you'll get more used to that as you start working with it a little bit more. So, for example, if you're asked to simplify tangent theta over secant theta by rewriting each trigonometric function in terms of sine and cosine, what you're going to do is you're going to use these identities, and I pasted them right here, just for reference. These are the upper left-hand corner of your identity sheet. First thing you're going to do is um, rewrite the expression in terms of sines and cosines. Do you see that tangent and secant are both, I, both functions that can be written in terms of sine and cosine? Basically, all of the trig functions can always be broken down into sine and cosine. So to write... Hold on. To write this out, to write this out, we're going to write tangent theta, which is sine theta over cosine theta, divided by secant theta, which is 1 over cosine theta. And now if we simplify this complex fraction, we're going to say sine theta over cosine theta divided by, which is times the reciprocal of 1 over cosine theta, so it's going to be cosine theta over 1, and we see that the cosine values cancel, so we're left with sine theta. So that, that basically means that tangent theta over secant theta is the same thing as sine theta. We just simplify the expression. Here's another... Um, expression that they're, we're asked to simplify. They're telling us to show that this actually... So they want us to prove this identity and they are asking us to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 minus cosine theta, but I think it would be simpler looking at this identity because I have practice with this. What we're trying to do is make the left side equal to the right side. So if we cross multiply here then we're going to get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine theta times 1 plus cosine theta. So now, if we FOIL the left side, we're going to get 1 minus cosine theta plus cosine theta minus cosine squared theta. On the left side, the right side will still be sine squared theta. See how these drop out and we're left with 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. And do you see that if we use this identity, if we rewrite, if we get sine squared by itself, we can say sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we know that 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. So we can now rewrite the expression as sine squared theta equals sine squared theta because that goes to that. And do you see now we have proven the identity? 
we've made the left side equal to the right side. Okay, so this brings us to another expression. They're asking us to simplify this expression by rewriting the expression over our common denominator. So we've got 1 over 1 minus sine u plus 1 over 1 plus sine u. So our common denominator is going to have to be um, 1 minus sine u, 1 plus sine u. So we're going to say 1 over, oh, not that. So to convert the first term, we're going to have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus sine u. So we're going to say 1 plus sine u over 1 minus sine u, 1 plus sine u. Plus, and then that we're going to have to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the second term by 1 minus sine u. So we're going to have 1 minus sine u, 1 plus sine u. So when we add these together, we're going to get 1 plus sine u plus 1 minus sine u over 1 minus sine u. 1 plus sine u, and if we uh, combine like terms, we're going to get 2, and then these, the sine u's drop out, so it's 2 over. When we foil these together, 1 minus sine u and 1 plus sine u, we end up with 1 minus sine squared u, and hopefully you'll start to recognize 1 minus sine squared u is a manipulation of cosine squared u from that, this identity. So we can write this as 2 over cosine squared u. Oops. And then lastly, to finally simplify this, we know that cosine, the reciprocal of cosine, is secant. So we can rewrite this as 2 secant squared u. Okay, so this brings us to an identity here. We're asked to establish the identity, so basically that means we want to make the left side of the equation equal to the right side of the equation. So first thing I would do here is rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So we're going to say sine theta times cosine theta over sine theta, which is tangent, cotangent theta. Oops. Yeah, it should be cosine over sine. And yeah plus cos um, sine over cosine, sine theta over cosine theta equals 1 over cosine theta. Now that we've written everything in terms of, si of sines and cosines, we can distribute the sine. So we're going to have sine theta cosine theta over sine theta plus sine squared theta over cosine theta equals 1 over cosine theta. Now do you see that the sines cancel in the first term, so we're left with cosine theta plus sine squared theta over cosine theta equals 1 over cosine theta. So at this point, we're a little bit stuck. What we want to do is to be able to combine like terms, so we need to get a common denominator here. So do you see that we've got cosine theta as a denominator in two of the three terms? So we're going to try to get a common de a denominator of cosine theta for this term. So if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by cosine theta, we'll end up with cosine squared theta on the numerator, cosine theta on the denominator, So now, do you see when we combine like terms, we get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over cosine theta. And now we know that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we can now rewrite that as 1 over cosine theta equals 1 over cosine theta. And we have proven the identity. We've got the left side equal to the right side. 
Okay, so this brings us to this identity. For us to establish this identity, again, what we want to do is first write everything in terms of sines and cosines. So we have 1 over sine theta minus cosine theta over sine theta equals sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So first I would combine the left side because we have a common denominator. Now once we've combined like terms, I would again, I would cross multiply here. And we'd get 1 minus cosine theta, 1 plus cosine theta equals sine squared theta. And if we FOIL the left side, we're going to end up with 1 minus cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. And we see that 1 minus cosine squared theta, again, is a manipulation of this. Sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we can rewrite this side as sine squared theta, and we see that that is equal to sine squared theta on the left side, and we again have proven the identity. So lastly, here are some guidelines for establishing identities that I think can be really helpful. Um, a lot of times it can be overwhelming when you're given an identity and you don't really know where to start. So if you kind of follow these guidelines, um, it can help you to kind of work your way through establishing the identity. Um, you always want to start with the more complicated side, the left or the right, just depending. Um, or you can always cross multiply. I, I like to cross multiply. The, my math lab doesn't seem to do that as often as I do, but a lot of times I feel like that can really help. Um, and basically, next thing you want to do is always is break everything down in terms of sine and cosine. A lot of times that's really, really helpful. So anyway, I hope this video helps. I know that these um, problems can sometimes get intimidating, but it just takes practice. You'll get good at them. It just takes a while.